welcome one and all to uh, Upper Room uh, Ministry Sunday evening service. Uh, we are at 180 Big Rock Drive in Dover, Pennsylvania. If you want to uh, come and uh, experience uh, Upper Room Ministries live, that's the address uh, you can uh, visit. If not, we have a, a variety of ways in which you can uh, watch us. There is the uh, Upper Room, uh, the URM TV network uh, with Heart Stream TV that uh, is reaching uh, all the nations. So, and you can watch uh, live stream on uh, Facebook at uh, Upper Room Ministries live stream. Uh, you can also go to upperroomlastdaysministries.org backslash heart stream or Facebook stream. And uh, we have a YouTube channel called James, named James W. Humphrey. Come and uh, you can watch uh, videos of uh, many uh, previous uh, services and teachings and whatnot. Uh, if you want to contact us, uh, we uh, have a uh, we have a number here, seven one seven three zero eight seven two three seven. You can leave a message, or you can call uh, Pastor Joan Joins directly at seven one seven five zero one ten sixteen. Okay, um, our um, our uh, mailing address is one four one eight zero. Heisen School Road, uh, Stewartstown, Pennsylvania, 17363. So you can send all written mail. You can also uh, send uh, a donation or an offering uh, there uh, if you want. Uh, just know that everything you send, everything you give, goes straight into the ministry. There are no uh, salaries or wages paid out. No. Nope. Everything goes straight into the spreading of uh, the gospel. Uh, you can also donate uh, by your phone, um, just uh, at uh, cash dot app backslash dollar sign u r m one, and uh, and donate uh, that way on your phone. All right, uh, here in this building, uh, we have a, a variety of um, of ministries. In addition to Upper Room, uh, we also have a Son of God Church that meets uh, every first and third Saturday at 6 p.m., led by Apostle Paul Stacey Ritzel. Uh, we also have the uh, Bread of Life Tabernacle, or Bolt Church, led by Prophetess Pastor Vernice Banks, starting at uh, 10.30 a.m. with Sunday School, and then 12.30 uh, p.m. Uh, for uh, church service. Uh, we also have uh, the School of the Prophets on the uh, last uh, Thursday uh, of every month, starting at 6, 6 p.m. with uh, Prophet uh, John Porter. And we have an intercessory prayer meeting that assembles every Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. All right. Uh, here at Upper Room, our uh, services start at 4.30. We have our Sunday School uh, teaching, led by m myself, uh, Assistant Pastor Michael Ganaway. Uh, 5 to 6 uh, is our prayer time. Then our uh, church service officially begins at uh, 6 p.m. On the first uh, Sunday of the month is our WOW gathering, and uh, that's where all the sisters uh, can come. And share what's on there, what God has laid on their hearts, whether it be uh, a poem, scripture reading, a prophecy, testimony, even a teaching. And you don't have, even have to be part of Upper Room Ministries to participate. Just uh, contact uh, Sister Joan, let her know uh, you want to come, and we'll uh, have a spot for you. Uh, second Sundays, uh, I, Assistant Pastor Michael Ganaway, will bring the message. On uh, the fourth uh, Sunday, Apostle uh, Paul Stacey Reitzel uh, will, will bring the message. And whenever there's a fifth Sunday, uh, we have a, a special speaker from outside Upper Room Ministries uh, coming in. And if you would like to be a special guest speaker, just uh, again contact Joan Joins at 717-501-1016. Also, our email address is urm.tv.network at 
gmail.com. Well, tonight uh, is the third Sunday of uh, September, and our uh, speaker is Apostle Howard Dissinger. This is Fire on the Mountain Night. And tonight there's going to be a lot of passion and a lot of intensity that only the Holy Ghost uh, can deliver. So we will now hand the uh, podium over to Apostle Howard Dissinger. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Uh, it's really good to be here tonight. Hallelujah. Is this being recorded? I'm live. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wow. It's good to be here. Um, I just want to say I thought it was interesting that the uh, last song, that the last song that we sang in worship was also the last song that we sang at the end of our service and our morning service this morning, the Blessed Assurance song. As I was, uh, as I concluded the message, um, it came to me, the Spirit spoke to me, Blessed Assurance. And I said, I've got to sing that song. And so tonight, the last song I played here too. So I thought that was interesting. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and the message from heaven tonight. I pray that you bless the hearers, that you bless those that are able to see, Lord God, to see and hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is saying, things that are happening, things that are beginning upon this earth, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that you put us right in the middle. I thank you, Lord God, that we are here and that we can be a voice and a people set apart for you, Lord God, waiting and looking to you, Lord God, knowing that you are God. Hallelujah. And we bless your holy, mighty name. And I pray, I pray tonight, Lord, rock this place, rock this service, Lord God. Rock the people that are hearing, whether they're hearing now or an appointed time. It matters not, Lord. Sweep right into them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Let your voice go forth, Lord God. We worship you. We praise you. We give you glory. Who is like unto the Lord? Who is like unto our God? There is none like him. There is no one like him. And we praise him. We give him glory tonight. Jesus, hallelujah. 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 I want you to turn with me for this word tonight. And we're going uh, to uh, First Kings. Hallelujah. And we're going to 18. And we're going to go to, start with 14. The passage is entitled, Elijah's Message to Ahab. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so in uh, verse 14, and now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened, verse 17, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? Hallelujah. He wasn't the troubler of Israel. Ahab and that wicked Jezebel and that religious generation, that python spirit that had strangled my people, they were the trouble of Israel. And now is a coming of a time, a turning of the tide, where God is coming and saying enough is enough. And Elijah was sent to set things right 
and to set things in motion. And I'm telling you tonight, hear the word of the Lord. I am setting things in motion. I am beginning my work effectively in this time, in this season, in this place, saith the Lord. Get ye ready. Look ye up on high, for God is coming. God is turning the tide. Glory to God. And he'll raise up a prophet to bring forth the word of the living God to say enough is enough hallelujah and yes they will think you are a troubler but they have been causing trouble there has been trouble brewing in this land trouble brewing in this world trouble brewing in the church trouble brewing outside the church but God is coming to destroy the work of the troubler and set things into motion into the right place there's a shifting in the atmosphere the Lord God is moving in this day and this time and his wrath is coming glory to God hallelujah hallelujah the arrogance the thick headedness of Ahab is that you O troubler of Israel and Elijah said and answered him in verse 18 of 18 I have not troubled Israel but you and your father's house have in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals now therefore send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Oh my God, hallelujah. You see, God began to put things in motion because the devil through Ahab and Jezebel had corrupted my people, saith the Lord, had tormented my people, had taken them prisoner, hijacked the faith, says God, but I am coming and I am turning the tide. God says I'm moving and I'm also moving in this day and in this generation and in this time where wickedness is coming out of the word work everywhere and they are calling good evil and evil good my God my God he is coming my God is putting things in motion hear the word of the Lord hear what God is saying church get ready the trumpet is sounding God's hand is beginning to move and there's going to be a shift there's going to be a change hallelujah it's like another showdown on Mount Carmel. Hey, where God is going to display he is really God and the false gods and the false doctrine and the false things of this world, the idolatry and all the manners of evil that are being embraced and normalized and idealized are going to be undone. They are going to be exposed for they have no power. Glory to God. God is God and God is going to demonstrate his mighty power glory to God wow we are in the presence of the Lord God Almighty and he is moving huh? see huh? hallelujah Ahab Ahab and Jezebel did not know what was coming they still thought in their arrogance they're gonna run the show down here but God says no you're not you rule you reign O oh wicked ones you that promote ungodliness you that promote perversion you that promote lawlessness you will be unseated saith the Lord glory to God hallelujah there is a shift coming hallelujah and we know as the story goes on that the prophet called the church and said let's not waver anymore see they couldn't know what was right is this right or is this right and some of the church is embracing the teaching and the doctrines of the world but that's not right and the church was twisted in their thinking and the prophet the man of God said how long how long are you going to falter between two opinions 
That's 1821. Elisha came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not. Then Elisha said in verse 22, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. See, Ahab and that wicked, wicked, wicked Jezebel was shutting down the voice of God through killing the prophets of God. When you kill the prophets of God, when you stone the prophets of God, you are rebelling against the Word of God. You are rebelling against the Spirit of God. And we have a movement in this land that began some time ago where the sword has, of the enemy has come and struck against the prophetic. Hallelujah. Has struck them hard and silenced a lot of them. But God's about to resurrect them. God's about to turn them about. God's about to bring them right back up. And God is sending a spokesman out to declare what he's about to do. To declare that there's a turnaround. You see, in this day and time, the enemy is trying to shut down the voice of God. That's why there's such a, a, a rush or so such a persecution to shut down voices of conservatism, to shut down the church, to shut down the voice of God and those that would represent the light in a dark generation. But God is not going to let the light be squelched. He's not going to let the enemy have his way. God is raising up his voice this day. He's raising up his prophet this day. And he is declaring a word to the church and to the generation and to the world take a look at what God is about to do because people are going to see the power of God fall from heaven like they were about to see the power of God fall from heaven so there will be no doubt in the land who is God and who is not who is a follower of the Lord and who is not who is believing in the law of the Lord and the commandments of our God and who is not there will be a division. There will be a separation of the sheep and the goats, saith the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the Lord God. And we know that the Baal worshipers who are state-sponsored sounds like today. The false prophets being pushed forward by this agenda, this doctrine. Hallelujah. It's like those false prophets assuring the church that this is the way now. We've done away with this stuff. We don't need this stuff anymore. And today... They have been silencing the prophets. They've been silencing the word. They've been silencing the teaching. They've been silencing anybody that might speak the word of the Lord in this day and this time if it does not meet what they demand, what they want to be accepted as, what they want to say, this is the way that we'll go into it, like in the days of Habakkuk. Hallelujah. And the man of God, now listen to me, the man of God allowed the prophets of Asherah and Baal, fully approved, fully sanctioned, fully sponsored by that wicked, wicked Ahab and that corrupt, corrupt woman Jezebel. A corrupt man and a corrupt woman running the show, running the nation. Let me say it again. A corrupt man and a corrupt woman running the show. And everybody's running after them. And we look at it and say, my God, how can this be? But God, before he demonstrated his power and who he is, allowed the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah 
all morning, all afternoon, all into the evening to have their way, to put on their program, to put on their airs, to cry out, call out. My goodness, they were even cutting themselves. But there was no move. There was no sign from heaven. Because there is no Baal. There is no Asra. There is only me, saith the Lord. I am one God. There is no other. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. That's it. Entire deal. And they had, for a while, been free to do their thing. Sound familiar? In this day and this generation, even though it's like, <sighs> they have their time to do their thing. God is allowing them the morning and the afternoon figure of speech, however long the morning is, however long the afternoon is, However long into the evening. And nothing's going to happen. And people are going to grow weary of it. Because what's happening right now is becoming distasteful. Shameful. And corrupt. And the church is watching. And God will allow them to watch. And then suddenly... Heaven is going to respond. The real, true, and only God, the righteous one from heaven, will release his mighty thunder and his mighty power in this hour. You can't be sure of it. He is a rock that you can stand upon and your ground will not sink. Though the seas and the things around will rage at you, you will not be moved because you stand on the rock. Hallelujah. I am a temple of the living God. You, my friend, you, my brother, you, my sister, you, my fellow prophet, you, my fellow minister, you are temples of the living God. And God is coming upon his temples. And he's letting you know right now to get ye ready can't you hear the sound of the rain coming you see we're in a drought and after elijah put a route to the false doctrines and the false prophets and the false gods he was going to take care of the drought too and i'm telling you we have been in a drought a spiritual drought a emotional drought a righteous drought a corrupt thing But fire fell. And so did the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah. For they were put to the sword. Huh. Enough of that. See, God is going to cut off the false prophets and the false doctrines that are doing the state-sponsored, state-approved stuff and saying, sure, we can embrace this. May God have mercy on those who said, yeah, we can do this. We can, we can rethink and, and we, can, we can redo our approach to make it acceptable. See, that's, that's where God's going to come in. <laughs> do you understand? 
So if you read on there, and I'm not going to read on, the fire fell very swiftly, by the way. And the first thing that happened is, as I said, Elijah put a route to the false prophets. And then he's going to take care of the drought. Hallelujah. Go to verse 41. Well, let's, let's go back to verse 38. After Elijah on the hill concluded his short prayer, when he put the, to silent all the prophets, they had all day and got nothing. It says in verse 38, 1838, we might as well read it. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. See, that's what we're going to hear. The Lord, he is God. Welcome. This is Sister Joan, Secretary for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.